Hi, I'm Paul Marshall. And I'm Keon Grissom. And this is P&K Talk NBA. All-Stars RSVP for Orlando, but who should have gotten their reservation? The Fast Snake, the Deadly Snake, the Yellow Mamba? And with the All-Star game right around the corner, I feel like a lot of players should have made it. On the Eastern Conference, I really felt like this was Josh Smith and Brandon Jennings' year. And if it was up to me to pick on pick who's going to the All-Star game, I would definitely replace Joe Johnson and Darren Williams with those two All-Stars right there. It's sad that they got snubbed. Yeah, when it comes to the NBA All-Star game, there isn't really an exact science. Um, a lot of different factors go into it. Um, if you're a player that's been there before, you're kind of the sexy name. People have heard about you before. Um, you've built a lot of equity. And the coaches picked the reserves this year, so... It definitely would make sense for them to, you know, pick a guy they've seen before rather than, you know, maybe take a chance on someone who has been putting up the uh, respectable numbers, but um, they're just not sure um, if it's just an anomaly or if it's actually legit. But there's no question that there are definitely some players this year, like a, a Josh Smith, a Brandon Jennings. Um, you can even make the argument that a, a Kyrie Irving, who's playing very well and you know, Anderson Vergeau is averaging a double-double. He's playing very effectively. Yeah, but, um, again, the coaches, you know, they have the say on the reserves. So there's no question. This is probably a controversial years, if you will. But um, it is important to note that there are some uh, first-time All-Stars who uh, made the cut this year. And uh, it's definitely nice. You have uh, LaMarcus Aldridge of the Portland Trail Blazers, who LeBron James tweeted as the biggest snub in All-Star game history. You have a, uh, you have a Gasol this year. Mark, and Mark is the, uh, as of right now, is playing as a better the All-Stars for the Western Conference as a center. You've got Lou Aldang, Rory Hibbert, and Andre Ugudala. Um, Andre's probably been uh, clamoring to play in this All-Star game as he was denied in the dunk contest about uh, six years ago, but you know he's a guy who's been a bright spot for the Philadelphia 76ers, so although you have a lot of snubs, you do have a lot of first-timers who have made the list, so you've got to tip your hats to them. Congratulations to all the All-Stars, all especially the first-time All-Stars. Um, Andre Iguodala, he, 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 it's long overdue for him to be an All-Star. Um, you know, he, he's brought the Philadelphia 76ers to the playoffs many times, and the 76ers is kind of like the silent team that goes into the playoffs, and it, it's, it's great to see the, the, the star of that team go into the All-Star game. I also... Would, would like to talk about Andrew Bynum. You know, he um, got suspended in the first uh, two games because of that flagrant foul in the playoffs against uh, the Dallas Mavericks on J.J. Barea. But I, I, a lot of people didn't think that he was deserving because of, because of his attitude and what he does off the court and just the fact that some people kind of see him as a big bully. But Andrew has stepped it up. He's averaging a double-double. He came into the Lakers with energy, and he's helping Kobe um, keep, keep the Lakers in the top eight in the Western Conference. Um, as well as, uh, I'm also glad to see Luau Dang in the All-Star game. He, he, he has done a lot for the Chicago Bulls, especially because Derrick Rose has been on day-to-day -day injuries um, with, with the foot problem. And Luau Dang is, 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 is helping that team stay number one in the Eastern Conference. And that, it's great that they that he's doing that, and um, you know they they really were looking for a good backup, and everybody thought it was going to be Carlos Boozer when he came into, even though I think that he's an overrated player, but it um with Luau Dang he's he's set aside him being a star, and he he knows that he's a backup, but he he does his job, and that's what I like about Luau Dang, and also for Marcus Saul, Marcus Saul is finally out the shadow of his brother. You know, it's mostly every time you hear Gasol, you think of pow, pow, pow this, pow that. And and now you see Marc Gasol, especially without Zebo being in the mix, um, he's really stepped it up and he's being the, a, a great big man. But also with this All-Star game, i also like to say congratulations to Scott Brooks, the head coach of the Western Conference. He's been with the Oklahoma City Thunder for only four years. That, and he's been an assistant coach, so he knows that team. And it's great that he's number one in the Western Conference right now, and I th I think that he's um he's gonna do well for the Western Conference. How about you? Yeah, I think Scott Brooks is definitely a you know former coach of the year. 
But uh, it's definitely, it'll be interesting to see him out there. Um, as it's been said, you know, Scott Brooks is a very young team. The artist formerly known as the Seattle Supersonics. Um, but with Oklahoma City, he definitely has, you know, Kevin Durant is definitely the, uh, the marquee guy on the team. But you also have a Russell Westbrook. And uh, many consider a leading candidate for sixth man of the year um, in James Harden. You also have young pieces like, a, you know, a Serge Ibaka or a Cephalosha. And uh, an old grizzled vet by the name of Kendrick Perkins, who many felt that when the Boston Celtics and the Oklahoma City Thunder um, traded for uh, respective pieces with Jeff Green and uh, Kendrick Perkins, that uh, Kendrick Perkins um, definitely was a huge piece for the Thunder to take that next step. But on the East, they have Tom Thibodeau, who's coach of the um, the the East, and you know Tom Thibodeau is a, is a great coach. He's a, he's a defensive-minded coach. He uh, coached with Doc Rivers in the 08 Celtics team, and uh, I think he understands. So it'll be interesting to see um, if you were to tell me that a, a Doug Collins or Eric Spolstra were to be coach, wouldn't really have a problem with it. But I think Thibodeau is deserving, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, again, with the All Stars, All Star game itself, um, it's always interesting considering that players get in, but it's not indicative of the team record. Maybe it's recognition. Uh, there are definitely players who, like we said earlier, um, have been selected, but it's kind of controversial. I know Dirk said in the year that he didn't consider himself an All Star, but here he is again. Um, with the playoffs, if the season, playoffs were to end today, start today. Um, guys who are on this team, their team wouldn't get in, so do they make it? But I must note that it is a little bittersweet to see that um, streaks have been snapped. Um, Kobe Bryant has made the All-Star game for his 14th uh, year in a row. Uh, Dirk has been an 11-time All-Star, and uh, Paul Pierce has been a 10-time All-Star. But with those three guys mentioned, there have also been some uh, old-timers still you know, hanging around playing the league by the names of Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan. And they've always been, you know, constant regulars in the All-Star game. So it is bittersweet to see their streak snap. But it definitely just shows you that uh, the tide is turning. And for the young guys, it's kind of their show. But for the old guys, they're kind of getting phased out. And it's very sad to see uh, Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett not make it. Um, especially their, their former All-Star MVPs. You have Tim Duncan back in 2000 and you got Kevin Garnett in 2003. And it, it's really sad to see the streaks uh, go away. Um, me, I, 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 I can see why Kevin Garnett didn't make it this year. To me, I think he's lost the intensity that he used to have when he was the, the, the head banging and the, and the just I haven't seen a lot of emotional emotion from him since you know strangling Bill Walker and um you know having bar fights and you know it. Especially because this Boston team hat was struggling earlier and they're kind of going on an up and down scale, I really uh, feel like I really feel like Kevin Garnett. I'm not saying that last year was his last time being in an All Star game, but I think that he's now declining from his peak. Uh, for Tim Duncan, I am actually very disappointed that he's not in the All Star game this year. Uh, especially because Manu Ginobili has missed 22 games and he's coming back. Um, and the Spurs are second place in, in the Western Conference. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that Tony Parker has led that team by himself to be to, to, to lead them to second place. I also believe that, you know, Tim Duncan is a major, major part of that, of, of that great team in the, in the, in the um, San Antonio Spurs. I mean, they're the, Hate to, hate to say this because Houston's my favorite team, but the Kings of Texas right now, and you got um, you know, uh, Tony has done a lot though. He's he's putting a bench bench um helped a lot of bench players score some points, especially in um, you know the not so center um Matt Bonner, you know he's actually been putting in work. Um, he's been helping out the two uh, rookies. That's also um the two rookies in um Splitter and um. And uh, Kyrie Leonard. Kyrie Leonard, and they will be in the uh, Rising Stars Challenge, and um, congratulations to them. And he, he's been helping out a, a, a lot, especially since Vanu Ginobili has um has been injured. And I am actually um glad that Tony Parker is in the All Star game. Uh, again, it'll be a good, interesting kind of kind of eclectic mix, if you will, 
um, guys that have been there before, guys that haven't, and uh, guys who just continue to be on it. But with the All-Star Game itself, you have the uh, All-Star Game, you have festivities, you also have a, you have the dunk contest. And uh, Blake Griffin, who is a starter for the West, has said that he probably won't reprise his uh, appearance as being the uh, slam dunk champ. Um, LeBron keeps uh, tempting us with the idea that he will, but at this point, uh, we really don't care what else LeBron does as long as he wins a championship. But it kind of brings up an interesting question as to, you know, who should be in the contest or who is considering. Uh, there are definitely guys like, you know, Houston's Chandler Parsons, uh, Indiana's Paul George, um, the JaVel McGee to maybe actually win it this time as opposed to last year when uh, Blake had a little bit more home cooking than, uh, you know, JaVel had. But it's interesting to see, you know, who's going to get in and who's not. But uh, Keon. Well, um, you know, I'm glad that you said Chandler Parsons off of my Houston Rockets. Uh, see, um, a lot of people may not know Chandler Parsons, but uh, he has had a, actually a lot of highlight dunks this year. Uh, the most two famous ones was probably when he um, hung on the rim and 360'd around Javal McGee. And uh, a lot of people might call this a controversial dunk arm, but the tip jam on Blake Griffin, even though Blake Griffin was not looking. Um I would love to see him in a dunk contest, and also Paul George, a young guy, you know, um, very he has hops out of this world, and uh, he has the speed, and uh, you know him being young, I think can be a very, uh, be very creative, and um, you know, also guys like uh, Javale McGee, I, I really feel like he should have won it, uh, and not not to take the talent away from Blake Griffin, but um, I feel like uh, Javale McGee did. Did, did a lot and he really tried to win that especially uh you know dunking three balls and you know the the the, the fact that he's a big man trying to win it as well as i, I kind of want to see andre iguodala win it again you know i kind of feel like he got cheated and um you know andre is a very very creative guy and he, explosive very explosive and i kind of want to see him in the dunk contest again make it more exciting mm -hmm. since if, if blake griffin doesn't come back to the dunk contest yeah, we'll definitely see what it boils down to. Um, I don't think the skills challenge uh, participants have been revealed yet. Um, it'll be a while for that. But we definitely have the All-Star Game teams lined up. The, uh, the Rookie Sophomore Challenge, is it still called that, or is there another name for it? The Rising Stars Challenge. Or, excuse now. me, the Rising Stars Challenge. That's uh, too PC when we're announcing these things. And uh, the Slam Dunk Contest participants have not been announced yet. But um, it's definitely uh, interesting to see. Now, to get to another topic, uh, last night, for those that, you know, were paying attention or were not paying attention, um, the Knicks played the Lakers. Um, the Lakers had, coming off their uh, win against Boston, where they uh, grinded out a win, but uh, they got to travel to MSG. And generally speaking, um, there's a little bit of history behind it, uh, Knicks, and, Knicks and Lakers, but... This was especially, especially a, a big game for a player by the name of Jeremy Lin for the New York Knicks. Now, if you don't know the background story, um, Jeremy Lin is a kid from uh, Palo Alto in California, uh, wins a state championship, um, does not get recruited by the hometown school, ends up going to Harvard where he does very well, um, becomes fifth, the fifth all-time scorer in their school's history. Um, once he graduates, he gets invited to a couple of uh, camps. He played summer league with the, uh, the Dallas Mavericks. Um, he ends up playing for the hometown uh, Golden State Warriors, where he is uh, he's eventually cut. Um, he, you know, spends time uh, in the D League and kind of bounced around, and uh, he even had a a, a stint in Houston. Now, uh, I don't mean to criticize anybody, but if there's one person I'm going to criticize for this moment, it's Jeremy Lin's agent. Um, the situation that Houston had was they had three-point guards with guaranteed contracts, and it would make no sense for a guy with without a guaranteed contract to uh, be trying to compete against you know three other guards who are probably more likely going to get playing time. That ended up not working out for him, and uh, he bounced around from the D-League. He gets called up by the Knicks. And uh, he's been on a tear. He's had a four-game winning streak. He's had about you know, 28 points, uh, 
seven rebounds, about you know, five, six assists. So, uh, so Jeremy Lin has really been playing well, and you could argue that he's been saving Mike D'Antoni's job. But he's been doing this without Amari Stoudemire, who uh, has had to deal with the tragic death of his brother, and won't be back until Monday. And you've had Carl, uh, Carmelo Anthony, who's dealing with the groin injury. So, um, Keon, he's been doing this without Carmelo and Amari. Um, is it simply a anomaly, or can this guy really play? Well, in the beginning of the season, you know, a lot of analysts and a lot of people were always always asking the question, you know, you got the the so called the, the I call them the big two and Carmelo and Amari Stoudemire, you know, they added Tyson Chandler, but everybody was asking that question, when are they gonna get a point guard? And when you have Tony Douglas as your point guard, they got Mike Bibby as a point guard, and Mike Bibby has been playing since you know, dinosaur ages now, and, you know, you got um, Tony Douglas, which he did okay last year, but he's not a starting point guard. And you got Jeremy Lin, who's who got called up from the D-League just a month ago, coming in here, and he's went against, um, you know, some great point guards in John Wall, Darren Williams, Derek Fisher, and Devin Harris. And, you know, the He's really, as you said, he is saving Mike D'Antoni's job. And matter of fact, he's saving Mike Woodson's job as well. Two head coaches. I'm not calling Mike Woodson an assistant coach. Two head coaches on the New York Knicks with two superstars and don't know how to play them is working better with a point guard that's working with what I like to call the most depriving players in, in history and Jared Jeffries, Bill Walker, Novak. And and you know, with him saving Mike D'Antoni and Mike Woodson's job, I mean, you know, for a second I thought, you know, Mike and Mike would do better in a early mor- early morning talk talk show. Other than, you know, coaching the New York Knicks. And especially um them playing playing well against the, you know, the uh the, the, the Lakers last night, I, I really saw a lot in Jeremy Lin. And now the question is, can he work well the same way when Carmelo and Omari come back? Um, when you see Jeremy Lin play, um, Jeremy Lin to me is a guy who is a, uh, he's not may not be the quickest, may not be the fastest, but um, he's a guy that if you get open, you get moving, he's going to get you the ball. And they've been on a you know four game winning streak. They they're actually in progress tonight. They're playing the Minnesota Timberwolves, so it's a matchup between him and uh, Ricky Rubio, who's another you know young and up and coming point guard uh, who came over from Spain. But um, Jeremy Lin kind of uh, speaks to not only hard work and determination. Sometimes you have to take a uh, unlikely um, journey to get to a uh, likely destination, but. He kind of remind it's, he kind of speaks to uh, one of the more underrated things in, uh, in the NBA, which is uh, intelligence. If you go over, if you go through any champion team and you look at the players on their team, uh, not saying that the Knicks are a championship team as of now, but some qualities that are similar is that IQ and intelligence. Um, you look at the Bad Boy Pistons. Even though they were a physical team, they were gritty, every single one of those players ended up in either a coaching position, GM, um, you can look at their background. Uh, you know, Bill Lambeer's dad was a CEO, Rick Mahorn was a coach, Bill Lambeer was a coach, uh, Dumars, um, Dantley, and Thomas were all GMs and presidents of a, you know, working in the big office. But Jeremy Lin plays controlled. I think he plays smart. I think he reads the floor pretty well. Um, and so when Carmelo and um, Amari come back, um, I think it would be exciting to know that those are guys who are going to get them the ball in the spots. But, um, you know, I think the Knicks do play better when the ball is moving rather than, you know, they get one guy holding it and kind of, you know, directing traffic and saying, hey, move this way, move that way so I can get my shot off. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how well they adjust because I think that's going to be the big part, them adjusting to, uh, you know, the way you know Jeremy Lin's been playing. I think the New York fan, the Knicks fan base, for that matter, is behind this guy. 
uh, you know, he was really, uh, you know, re-inspired. I don't know if you saw the game last night, but uh, it, a ticket at MSG was a ticket of the night. You could really tell that uh, you know, MSG was rocking. And, you know, when that's happening, you know, magical things happen in that building. But Jeremy Lin, I think, is really helping out this team. And But he really speaks to uh, why NBA intelligence sometimes doesn't get looked doesn't get looked at or is very underrated, but uh, it's definitely interesting to see. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you talk about that ticket. You can ask Spike Lee. He's been tweeting about Jeremy Lin for probably about 24 hours. Um, and the it's a great thing that you said IQ, and, and you talk about Jeremy Lin, but I also like to bring up another guy, and that's Landry Fields. That's part of the Knicks, and I, I love the combination of um, what I like to call them the bookworms of Jeremy Lin and Landry Fields. And uh, they're, they're, they're coming out the same year, about the same age. As a matter of fact, the same age. And they are, um, you know, not to say they're showing up, the veterans and Carmelo and Amari, but, you know, they're, they're, they're showing that, you know, we're here. You, you don't have to worry about Carmelo and Amari because you got Jeremy Lin and Landry Fields. Well, um, as well as, you know, Tyson Chandler's been getting the ball more and he's – He's brought out intensity, and that's what I liked about like about Jeremy Lin. He brings an intensity. He's a point guard that drives, and you know the last point guard that you know that drove like Jeremy Lin is now MVP, and he's on the Chicago Bulls, and Derrick Rose. But uh, Jeremy Lin and Landry Fields as a combo is, is is amazing, and as I said, they they bring in the the the, the bench players, and everybody's just playing like you know they're all starters now. And it, they, you know, they, um, you know, they're getting double-digit games sometimes, and um, you know, I, I like what Jeremy Lin brings, especially. I, I don't want to be very racial about it, but you know, usually the Asians in the in, in the league are usually the tall ones, and Yao Ming, Yi Ji Leon, um, and now you have, you know, this point guard, and this is probably the first Asian point guard that's that's in the league, and and he's. He's amazing. And um, I'm not going off of the hype. Well, I probably am going off of the hype, but, you know, I, I, I just really want to see him with Carmelo and Amari. Are they going to continue running plays off of uh, off of Jeremy Lin to get it inside? Or are they going to, you know, go back to, you know, Carmelo being their prolific scorer, scoring all the time, or giving it to Amari and Amari doing his own thing? Are they going to continue running plays off of Jeremy Lin where they can get the ball probably even more? Because now you have three scores. And with those three scores on one team, you're going to have some problems if you're, if, if you're part of the Eastern Conference. They're in ninth place right now. If they win this game, they might get into eighth place. They'll be in the playoff hunt. And I really want to see this, this team progress, especially because you know the Knicks have always had the history of having great players they just can't make that final stretch. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see. But uh, Jeremy, play- Jeremy Lin is playing very well. And, uh, you know, he's a team first guy. And uh, when you have a guy like that in your corner, you can do nothing but root for him. And uh, Tyson Chandler actually said that uh, when you're playing with a guy like Jeremy Lin, um, he works hard, competes, you know, helps other guys, you know, rally the troops and get them playing well. You have no choice but to match that level and play as hard. So, Jeremy Lin is definitely doing a lot of a lot of things for the uh, the Knicks, uh, saving jobs, winning games, um, inspiring team teammates to play better. And like you even said earlier, um, there's been kind of a lot of castaway players, or I don't know if I can call them castaway players, but a lot of uh, ancillary pieces with Bill Walker, Jared Jeffries, you know, Novak, and. Uh, been interesting but he's really you know kind of bringing out the best in them but there's no question you know Jeremy uh, Lin is really really playing well sometimes he can dribble too much uh, he's really you know playing solid and uh, hopefully good things are to come for uh, the Knicks Lin Sanity this is Keon Grissom this is Paul Marshall this has been PNK with the NBA